is about evangelism, you all, is God's call all of us to share our faith. If you think about it carefully, God saved us for somebody else. He didn't save you and I just to get a free ticket to, to heaven and get out of hell free car, right? Mm-hmm. And I think one of the, the onus is that we have responsibilities to share our faith in a relational way. Back in the day, it was easy for someone to tell someone, listen, if you if you die right now, you know you're spending eternity in. Men don't even care about that nowadays. They would say, I'm going to hell and I'm okay with that. But some would say, I don't know and don't want to know. And one of the challenges of our ministry of being evangelists, whether you accept it or not, when God called you, he called you from something to something, but he's also called you to somebody. That means there's no greater blessing than to go to heaven than to take somebody there with you. Amen, somebody. Amen. God has saved us to allow us to be a, a, a vehicle, a beacon light to those who are lost. Now that God's turned the light on in our lives, he wants us to turn the light on in someone else's life by illuminating ourselves to the people. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so what? Shine before men, that they may see your good what? Works, and they may glorify your Father who art in heaven. So your job is not to shine for you, but to shine for Jesus Christ. So as God shining the light on you, let's be a committee of one and share our faith, share the light of Christ that's inside of us with people who don't know our Christ. And may you continue to die to yourself. And when you do that effectively, it helps you and me and I and all of us to be able to do what we do for Christ in the most magnificent way. So let's get started. In your outline, in your sheet there, you have something significant there. It talks about what this class is really all about. It says, what does it say? Jesus came to earth and as a relational God who was willing to do life in community with people in order to bless people, to have everlasting life. Jesus told stories. Somebody say stories. Never stop telling stories of how God delivered you, how God has blessed you, how God's kept you. And remember, your story is actually your journey to God. From something to something. Also, Jesus asked questions. I looked at it and I did some research. Did you know Jesus asked over 318 questions? Wow. All through the Gospels. Because Jesus was inquisitive. Evidently, because he's sovereign God, he already knew the answers. But he wanted people to move to what? Start a conversation. People are communicative. And the more we communicate with them and share our lives with them, it becomes easy to know us. Serve others. Did not Jesus serve people? Yeah. It was amazing when they were arguing about who would be the greatest of the king. Jesus, let me stop for a second. Let me pull out a towel, you know, water, water basin, and he began to wash his disciples' feet yeah. by teaching them. So there's a teaching lesson of serving other people, right? But also, Jesus met people where they were. And that's what we're going to do today. Talk about how to meet people where they are. Today, we're going to look at five ways. Somebody say five ways. Five ways. Of journeying with people to introduce them to Jesus Christ. And here's the statement. If you want to know more about this teaching today, there's a book called Bless, Five Everyday Ways to Love Your Neighbor and Change the World by Dave and John Purpose. You've heard of them before. Mm-hmm. They, they're one of their main ministries is called Exponential. You might have seen it before. So Genesis 26, 1 through 5. Anybody want to grab that and read that through? Anyone feel led to do so? You say you read? Go ahead. Ready? Go for it. He said, ladies first. You're up. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the former famine that was the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and I and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands. And I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of the heaven, and will give to you, to your offspring all these lands. And in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Wow! This is an amazing a text of how God will use Abraham as a beacon light to His people. Who are the four of the three? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is keeping a promise to them and through them that will bless nations. But whether you know it or not, we are still children here of Abraham. 
At the same time, believe it or not, the church in the old covenant, which actually in a sense was not existing, but God's people were what? The Israelites, the Hebrews, those of the Jewish culture. But now in the New Testament, the New Covenant, we would call it the same way, but we're sharing a Christ that can save not just some nations, but all nations. Amen? Amen. Let's walk through it. If you look at the text here in, in 26, 1 through 5, and you probably see God's presence in their lives. What did God do? First of all, there was a famine in the land, verse 1. Verse 2, what did God do? He appeared unto them. Do you know when we show up, the church shows up? Yes. And when the church shows up, that's God's presence. So maybe God sprinkles us in our jobs, our communities, but where we go shopping at, wherever we are, when we show up, the church just showed up. Yes. So the Lord appeared to them in verse 2. But in verse 3, then you begin to see God begin to show himself faithful to them. I shall tell you, God spoke to them. The next thing, verse 3, I will be with you, God's presence is there. I will bless you, now God will do some favor in towards them. And I will give to you. He gave them something that he couldn't give to himself. God gives. Do you know, our, our response is to be a gift to people who don't have a gift of Christ in their lives. The text also says, I will establish them. Some people don't have a firm foundation in their life, and they need the cornerstone. His name is still Jesus Christ. Yeah. The text also tells us also that he says, I swore to anybody that lets people that don't keep their promises. <laughs> the Bible says, Jesus said, I, God says, I swore to Abraham your promise. God always keeps his promises. Yes, he does. Do you know every scripture from, Re- from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22, verse 21? I'm going to do a bit of that. So, so the context is all the Bible is God's promises. All the verses are yes and amen. Yeah. But also, I will multiply. Mm. Nobody multiplies lives better than God. Yeah. When you also see, I will give. And also, your offsprings. God says, I don't just want you. I want your children and your children's children. Mm-hmm. And also, the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That's what we see. Matthew 11, verse 19, for our time, I'm going to read the text. Now, we move into the New Covenant, the New Testament. Now, watch how Jesus is seen. Watch how people even depict Christ. Matthew 11, verse 19. The Son of Man came eating. What was he doing? Eating. And what was he doing also? Drinking. Drinking. And they said, look at him. Not in the positive way, you all. A glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Do you think people look at Jesus favorably in that context? He's a religious person, even people we think that are unreligious. Jesus is a, he's a supposed savior or messiah, and he's eating with sinners. Just as they talk about Jesus for eating with people who don't know Christ. When we begin to go and engage with people who are on the outside of faith, they're going to judge you too. That's part of the DNA of the Christian. You do right by God because you're not here to please people. We're here to please God. Look at, look at the context. What did Jesus do? He ate with them. He drank with them. It is that he got drunk, y'all. Let us keep it in the context. <laughs> they looked at him. It is a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors. So he ate with people who they thought the culture said these are people that you should eat with. Right. So there comes some people in your life that God's going to dispatch to you. And God's going to say, I want you to speak to them. And you're going to say, well, my friends and my neighbors, what not? But I'm not calling my neighbors and friends. I'm calling you. Yeah. When everyone's in your life is not there by accident, what happens to say this? Mm-hmm. On God's divine, providential purpose, you are there to reach people who more than likely could not even other people because God sent you there. Yes. Let's go further. And Acts 4, verse 13. Now it's possible. People have been watching Jesus on that word in Matthew 11, 19. This is about Jesus' life. All the gospel is about Jesus' life. His life. What happens in Acts 4 13? These men, 12 disciples, have been changed. They've been walking with God. They've heard of Jesus. But now, the word Acts means the activities or the actions of the apostles, the called ones, the disciples. Let's see how they're judged now. Jesus was the judge negatively. Look at Acts 4 4 13 and 10. Now, when they saw, there's it, there it is, there's it, is. someone's always watching this, aren't they? Yes. The boldness of Peter and John. Wow. And perceived that they were uneducated, they didn't have it all together. 
Mm-hmm. Common men, just known people, no one of real reputation. They were astonished, they were overwhelmed. These guys didn't go to seminary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They weren't in Bible college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who did they sit under? These were mostly what? They were all what? Fishermen. Fishermen. They yeah. had common labor intense jobs. But listen, it doesn't matter what your job is when your calling is in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. God can change anyone's. Listen, your job is what you do for the world, but your calling is what you do for worship. Yeah. 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 The text tells us in, in the verse, it says what? It says, and they recognize that they had been with Jesus. Can people see your lifestyle and say, you've been, I can tell you've been with Jesus? Yeah. The way you speak. How you care yourself, how you love it, how you're more compassionate, kindness. Do you speak oracles of recognizing that you sit in a soft tone? People need to know how much you care before they care how much you know. Let's walk through this. Here it is, you all. Biblically led Christ followers are Christ like, and they do like Christ. What that means is this watch this. You cannot say you're a Christian and you don't do like Christ. Because those who are Christ's followers always do what Christ did. Right. I have a challenge for you all. I've seen so many medallions, bracelets, anklets. It says, what would Jesus do? Well, is that really correct? It's not what, what would Jesus do. The question should be, what did Jesus do? What did he do already? Not what would he do, what did he do? And if we just honor Christ and what he already did in all the gospels, of how he shared it. Jesus didn't wait for people to come to church. He did the church to the people. Yeah. So let's stop being ones. Wait, listen. We are not fishers in an aquarium. We're fishing for men and women who need to know Christ. Yes. And here's my statement. Here's my honest to you. Here's my warning to you. And here's my admonition to you. What if we're judged by God at the beam or the judgment seat? And God asked the question, who is in heaven for me to you down on earth for those many years? Oh, why should I bless you in eternity for all the years I left you down there and you never spoke about me? Or do we want to hear those words, well done, good and faithful service? I want to share with you five words, well, at least four truths. Somebody say four truths. Four truths. Four truths. That every Christ should have. I'm hoping you can identify with this. Here they are. Four. Recognize that God is the ultimate evangelist. Somebody say evangelist. Amen. Amen. Not them, not us. God just uses us to get sinners to him. Yes. Does that help for us enough? Mm-hmm. Let's take the pressure off you. You are not the evangelist. You can use the vessel, a vehicle, an instrument was praising Lord. God just wants to use you as a conduit to go through us to get to somebody else to bring it to us. Amen. God wants people to know Him. He just wants you to use. The question is, are we when we sing the songs, Lord, you can use me? Yeah. Do you really mean that when you say that? Yeah. Number two, cooperate with God. Yeah. God, I want it, I want the perfect weather. Mm. Lord, I, I, listen, I need to make sure there's no rain outside. Send somebody to me that looks real nice that I want people to be uncomfortable with. And then, Lord, please make sure that person is going to smell good when they walk to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God's going to know. I'm God. You're not cooperating with me. Right? Yeah. Yes. The Lord's plan, the Lord's way, the Lord's time. Yes. And here it is. We join the Holy Spirit in where He is leading. Yes. And that means wherever you're living at, whatever community you're born with, wherever you work at, God says, I, I want you to join me wherever I'm working and whatever I'm doing. Look at the third. Look at the third. This is powerful. Do life with others. Yeah. Here's the challenge, you all. This is very important. Doing life with people is the new way of sharing faith. You know why? Because people all say, I don't sit in. It's real. Mm-hmm. We don't want phony, disingenuous. Unauthentic people. Listen, are you real enough to, to dwell with me so I can know you and I can trust you? Yes. In this culture, trust is the hardest thing to do so because we've seen so many people who are proven to be untrustworthy. How many times have we seen all the newscasts and all the, the, the Facebook pages and all the other Twitter accounts 
where a, 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 a saint, a preacher, had fallen into what? Sin. We've seen so many congressmen or political uh, activists or political people in office that fall in sin. Trust is earned nowadays, and you have to do what? Earn that accept. Do like others where they are. People will care how much we know when they know how much we care, right? But look at the fourth one. This is the powerful one. Help bring a person closer to God. And you, watch this wrong. Watch this example. One step. Is that close to you right now? Yeah. Yes. Another step. Is that close to you now? Don't get scared. I'm going to take one more step. One more step. Third. I'm further along now than I started. But here's the statement. That could take a week, month, or six months to a year. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to walk with God? Are you willing to walk with God? Because the minimum that we look back at our own lives, Baby. <laughs> and see how God has brought us through a long yeah. way? Yeah. It took us time before we are now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're still under construction, and God is not through with us yet. Yeah. Anybody have yeah. God yet? I know I got not. Yeah. Yeah. And we're under construction. Yeah. Listen, He's still working on us. Yeah. And please be patient with people, because God is patient with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, and, and just when you're ready to give up, that right moment, the person says, I'm all busy, but you stop coming. Stop calling. We stop calling. We stop texting. We give up on me. We give up on everybody else. Who are in the perfect situation? You gave up on me. I'm so glad the deacon who spent three years discipling me didn't give up on me when I was looking at the game of life. He kept reminding me to church vacation Bible school. Somebody didn't give up on me. Don't you know what Amen. 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 Is this what we're talking about right now? Yes. yes. By loving them, yes. patiently, what? Sharing our faith one step at a time. Yes. I have three children, 14, 12, and 10. My wife and I was, well, my wife brought them into the world. <laughs> but we fed them, we gave them small morsels because they couldn't eat the, the full meat. Some of you are sharing faith with, wow. depending upon where they are and who they are. Some people take large bites and be on fire for Christ. Some folks are going to say, give me the burger, baby food. Give me one spoon. I don't trust that. Can I hold this spoon myself? No. But, I'm, but I'm the preacher. No, no. Well, if, if, if you can hold the spoon, I don't want what you have to offer. Mm-hmm. Some people just want one verse. They don't want a whole chapter. Yeah. Some folks don't want a verse at all. They just want to see you live the verse. Right. Yeah. Some of those folks do not want you to invite them to church. Invite them to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do Listen, if I invite you to my house, they know what my address is. That's okay. They're going to come and be prayer for me. They need to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> less questions. We're going to walk through each one of them and we're done with it. We'll open it up for conversations. How are we doing on time? Is this helping anybody right now? Yes. Let's, let's make sure we go in the right way and we're on the same page. Good. We're 18 minutes in. Here it is. Begin with prayer. Somebody say B. B. Begin with prayer. Listen. Pray for the unchurched. I want you to circle the word unchurched. Get your pen. Let's, for this very reason now, the people we're talking to, Let's give up the word and stop saying unsaved. Because mm-hmm. okay. people, when you tell them, my brother, that you're unsaved, you're judging them. Yeah. You tell them that you're not right. You're going to H.E. double hockey sticks. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get into eternity. Right. You don't know who you're speaking That's to. It. And, right. and people, when you write off, you're unsaved. So therefore, I'm going to hell, I must accept it and move on my life. Don't talk to me then. Wow. When you tell someone that they're unchurched, well, then you ask them, well, they ask them, well, how do you define the word unchurched? Unchurched is defined in this vernacular as this. Anyone that's six months removed out of your in community church. That's everybody. That's everybody. Most of the times, right? How many people in the pandemic got around going to the physical church, right? Yeah. Six months, does that make sense? Yeah. So anyone that's six months removed away from a gap of baptized believers, yes. they're unchurched. And, and a person that's not saved can I go along with that. Because mm-hmm. there's some people who are saved are unchurched because of church hurts. How many people in the church don't go out of the church? 
But they're still saved. But because they don't attend your building, right. it's not only you push the building, it's not getting people into eternity. Right. So do this. Pray for the unchurched. Love prays for others. If you love people, pray for them. Write down this, these acronyms. Pray. F-R-A-N-C. Not K. F-R-A-N-C. Some of you know that acronym pretty well. So friend is, the first F is for friends. Friends. You're praying for your friends. And here's this other word. Another word beyond friends. R is for relatives. That's your family. That's your family. These are the ones you're in a relationship with. A is for acquaintances. A is for acquaintances. Please don't ask me to spell that. A C Q U A I N C A N C E. God bless your ministry. Right. So it is. And acquaintances is folks that you may see when you go to the grocery store, you go and get your laundry, anybody who's playing cashiers, anybody who goes to the store, you see them on the train, on the metro station, Uber drivers. You're acquainted with them, but they're not your friends, not your relatives, right? Mm-hmm. Right. How about this one? Neighbors. Mm-hmm. If a condo, um, a, a apartment above you, below you, left of you, right of you, below you, a um, townhouse next door to you, you own your home, across the street from you, across the alley, those are people that's in your neighborhood. Yeah, right. How about see? If you're still working, maybe you might be not be full-time ministry like these two guys I know right here. So you might have some co-workers who still sit there and watch. Who, who are you know are unchurched? Now, I don't say, but they are unchurched. But these are the right. So, what happens is their co workers might be praying for them. That's right. So, you're praying for your friends. What's the R? Relatives. Relatives. What's the A? Acquaintances. What's the N? Neighbors. And what's the C? Co workers. Amen. Those are the ones you're praying for. So, here's the thing I, I did not say the people on the corners, they need prayer too. But in relational evangelism, you pray for people that you relate to on a daily basis. Right. And, and for that reason, they're more open to let you share your journey of what God with them because they know you. Yeah. They sing you. They can have an acquaintance with you. They spend time with you. And guess what? God has dispatched them in your lives. Mm-hmm. Philippians 4 6 says, What? In everything. Somebody say, In everything. In everything. In everything. By prayer and what? Supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. That means you may be praying about people for everything. Twinkle. Before you talk to people about God, first talk to God about people. That's right. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. God, I gotta talk to my my, my neighbor, my co worker, my friends, my relative. Me and him or her don't get along. Lord, deal with me first. Right. Before you deal with them. Salt in my heart. Lord, Help my, help my body language, my face expressions. I don't let me not bring up my past. Let me not, when it says I'm off, off, not off color, that I won't show any face expressions. Make sure I'm okay. God, deal with me. Pray for people. Helps you to get right before you go into the speech. Right. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do go to the throne before you take them to the throne. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Here it is. It's a must. So speak to God about whom he has put. On your heart. Remember, you love people, you're going to pray for them. Does that make sense? Yes. What's the L? The L is what? Listen with patience. The L is listen with patience. That means listen to learn. Understand others. Get people talking about themselves. You know, when you start talking to people, let them talk more than you do. And the more they talk, the Holy Spirit will tell you, okay, I'm going to give you an area. When they say this, that's, that's right now. That's the person to speak to. But they talk about the, they had some past problems with bad relationships. That that's another way to do it. The more people begin to talk, once they begin to tell them how to share the gospel with them. Does that make sense, you all? Yes. Yeah. But also James 1:19 tells us something. This is hard for us, especially those real super Christians. It says, "Be quick to listen." It's amazing. He put that one first, and he said, "Be quick to listen." Yes. He said, "Be slow, please. Be quick." Because we're real slow to listen, aren't we? Yeah. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to rap. Slow to speak, slow to be upset when things don't go your way. When they don't operate or respond the same way. And then the next one says, what? Be willing to hear from them. Call it wise. That's what Proverbs 18 17 says. It's smart to listen. It's loving to listen. 
and listen to people and engage them to tell you their heart and stories. Here's you all. We need to gain more friends when we listen than when we talk and we speak. Yeah. Ask open your questions. That means encourage them to elaborate. Watch this. Let's, let's do an example. Ready? I know we're taking this, but this is for your own growth. Did you have a good day today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me about your day today. Difference. How's your family? Tell me about your family. Is that a good for question? You don't have your job? <laughs> Tell me about the job that you do. Which one's more than quote question? When you ask them to do what they yeah. lab on yeah. yeah. And when you ask open probe questions, they feel comfortable saying, listen, they really want to split up. They must really care about what you're saying. Yeah. And then what you do is try not to eat too much. Oh, yes. And try not to, to finish the answers for them. Yes, yes. yes. I know I feel the same way. I feel the same thing too. <laughs> and what that means is, and the more they begin to talk, their, their guards come down. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Their scales come down. Yeah. 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 All the chains and their, 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 their arms and transactions say, wait a minute, first of all, well, my spouse is asking those questions. Yeah. My children don't care about me. Yeah. My parents only really ask those questions in the universe. Wait a minute, my boss just gives me work to do. Don't even, don't even speak to me. Yeah. You know what? You really do care. How much time? I tell you all about my family. Mm -hmm. I tell you all about my job. Because most people don't have anybody to listen to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all we do is use the things that Jesus did in the scripture. Yeah. He asks questions and he just listens. What about the woman at the well? He told his 12 disciples, listen, I need you to go to the to the store over here because you can't handle the woman over here. Mm -hmm. And every question she brought, you know, every act, act, every part of what she began to say, apprehension about what she was speaking about, Jesus sat there and journeyed with her. Mm -hmm. She could tell by the way he was, she was dressed that more than likely he was a Jew, and we don't associate with Jews as, as Gentiles. But Jesus didn't deal with that. He kept asking her more questions. Mm -hmm. This is wrong. People will drop their angst and anxieties toward us when they really see that we have nothing against who they are, right. and we want to accept them who they are, and journey them with them where they're going. Amen? Amen. Let me just ask you, I want to the questions and answers and get some feedback. I like this one here. It says in the E is eat. Somebody say eat. 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 This is the easiest one. How many business yeah. deals have been closed around the field, right? Yeah. Jesus dying with them. Dying to death and worship with them. Love dies with others. If you love them, eat a meal with them. And if you still don't have afternoons and invite them into your house, I'll meet you at Starbucks. Yeah. Let's walk over to Dunkin' Donuts. McDonald's is right here. Let's go eat together. And you sit there and, and don't be afraid to make a sacrifice and invest in a meal for them. Right. And sit down with them, let them eat, let them, let them talk. Food can you fly across your face and they're talking. Yeah. But let them talk. Yeah. And don't be like, can you say it and not spread it? No, no. Let them speak yeah. because now they're sharing their faith with you. Because guess what's happening? You just brought them to a place where, listen, you listen to them, you're eating with them, you're journeying with them, they're like, wow. Mm -hmm. This person really does care about me. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens in the next part text. He says there, Matthew 11, 19, the son of man is praying to us. How many unchurched friends do you all have? They're like, I'm unchurched now. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. How many unsaved friends do you have? Let's go there. Sometimes, as Christians, we have too many saved friends. Right. All our friends are in church. Yeah. Uh, we don't have enough unsaved friends in the world. Can you look at down the street from somebody who was a lady of the evening, lady of the night on the corner? It, I didn't have a friend. Will you be my friend? She'd be like, what? <laughs> my drug dealer on the corner. Can I be? Listen, but I, I didn't have a brother with a friend to talk to. And you know, we should have this corner. I, I know. That's okay. But you, my friend, right along this corner. Can we talk a minute? That's your life? Yeah. But Christ wants you to have a better life. Amen. Being friends with people, just by asking, can I be your friend? Will you be mine? 
What you be, my people? The next one says what? Look at the back page there. This is interesting. Friends eat with other people. A friend loves it how many times? All the times. If you want a friend, be friendly. Listen, you all. Do not let them believe that there will be another notch on your belt. I say, hey, I brought another person to Christ. Pastor, I'm not going to get to Christ. Don't let them feel that you have ulterior motives. Ask them to invite them to share with you. Ask them. Don't force them. Ask them to do so. The the, the next test is what? Serve with perseverance. That means don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't give up with people. Care for them. Love them. Assist them. Help them. Somebody read Galatians 5.14 with me. Will you read it? Let's read it. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. Do you this in the Bible? Use your opportunity and your freedom to do what? To do what? Serve one another. And he doesn't just mean just the ants. The saints. He wants the ants too. Mm-hmm. The ones who don't know Jesus yet. Amen. We are the saints, but he wants the ants also. Right? Amen. Galatians 5 14 also lets us know. Don't give up helping certain people. And when they ask you why you do it, you do it until they ask you why. Mm-hmm. So maybe they may ask you, listen, what you I'm going to plant some, some flowers. Girl, I'm going to help you too. What? Mm-hmm. I'm going to wash the car. Well, I, I'm going to run the water tires. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to wash the car. Well, I wash the windows. Are you serious? Right? Hey, let's go. We're good. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go shovel some stuff. I'll shovel this. I'll bring, I'll bring my shovel and we'll do it together. This will change your neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. And you keep serving them until they ask you what? Why? And when they ask you what? I say, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> you know, 2,000 years ago, somebody needs to be called to me. So when they ask you why, that becomes a first is yours. When they ask you why, that becomes a moment of opportunity when you begin to say, listen, God, thank you. Because you know why? You've loved them. You've listened to them. You've heard them. You let them eat your food and spend your money, right? And now you've served them. Now they say specifically, why? Watch this. They just gave you an audience. To share the gospel without someone saying, I don't need you. Yeah. Right, right. What did you do? You pray for them, one. What did, what's, the, what's the next L? You listen to them, two. Mm-hmm. Then you ate with them, you were eating with them, you fellowship them, three. Then you serve them, not asking for wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's stop. For three weeks, three months, you've been doing this. What's your real moment? Why are you doing this? I'm so glad you asked the question. Jesus sent me. On the side, just to spend time with you. Is this helping anybody right now? Yes. Yeah. Well, we, just, we took down all the scales and the armor, and we did life with them in a relational way. Let me close. It says Colossians 3 17, and what some of you do, we're on page two, Chris. Colossians 3 17, and what, what some of you do in word or deed, we do everything in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. You're not doing it for you. You're not doing it for the church, you're doing it for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do not do it for your not showing your blood to break somebody in Christ. You're doing it for Jesus. Yeah. You're not trying to increase the membership, increase the guitar in your church. You're doing it for Jesus. Yeah. You're not trying to increase the choir members, or increase the session professors, or increase the small groups. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen churches where small groups are competing. But you can just hang on there. Oh. Yeah. Not your church. Maybe just my church. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, work hard you, for the Lord, put your heart into it. Right. Don't do it for men. Do it for women. Yeah. God. Yeah. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. And maybe your reward won't come on this side of earth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're doing it for an eternal abode yeah. and inheritance that no one can take from you. I love what you say that what God has for me is yes, for me. Yes. And if you do it for God, God sees your heart mm-hmm. and He knows your motives. Mm-hmm. The last S, open up the questions. Well, you can get a close up friendship with people whom, with whom you work with, if your heart's with them, ask them if you can help assist them on these projects. Can I? 
this is not your notes, but can I say this without any reservations? After you serve them, if they want to serve you back, don't you say no. Right. Relationships is now you didn't show us no, you didn't go cut the grass, you didn't clip the hedges. They were going, let me help you. No, 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 no. I do it for you. Now you're arrogant. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You have an ulterior motive now. Keep yeah. friendships. They were saying back and forth. You for me, I do for you. And then we're in friendship together. And now they can trust you. So if, if, if God leads them to serve you, that means now they, they're what? They're warming up to you. That's part of This is relational evangelism. You can't go and say, listen, if you die right now, you want to see the attorney? That is not going to work in this culture nowadays. People want to know whether you care and whether you are going to journey with them. And it may take six months, six weeks, three months, but in the body of the drop the cross. And if Christ will you know you, get you into your knees. Yeah. By the way, I say it's done. Share Christ with friends. Share your story with them. If nothing else, you leave here today knowing you need to know your story of how Christ brought you to, 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 to eternity, right? Yes. 5 and 6. There's only one chapter. I didn't miss the word. So it's chapter 1, verse 6. There's only one chapter. That's why I just said verse 6. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective. Can you imagine Paul is speaking to Philemon and Shepherd? I pray that your effectiveness of your faith becomes so, ex- so exciting and so great in what you do that watch what happens. That for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us, the sake of Christ, by you becoming better at sharing your faith in a relational way, it brings glory to Christ, not to you. Yes. yes. There's two ways of sharing Christ. Contact evangelism, relational evangelism. Yeah. Contact was the, the, was the four spiritual laws. Contact evangelism was the Romans of salvation. Contact evangelism is, is the, the, the way of the master. That's called contact evangelism. I'm going to share that with you, not in March, not in April, but in May. I'm going to share these three ways of sharing your faith when you're willing to close the deal. But in sharing your purpose, here it is. I have learned, now listen to these words. I type them out for you. You know, I have learned so much about you these last few months, about our conversations. And then, then, then would you next what? I have a question to ask you. Where are you on your spiritual journey in life? I didn't, we didn't ask you, are you saved? Right. The key word is we don't use the word unsaved, we use the word unchurched. Mm-hmm. A person in six months, what? You hold God from the church. But then still be saved. Mm-hmm. They have a bad experience in church. Mm-hmm. And I messed them up. So where are you on your spiritual journey in life? Would you learn about share with you my spiritual journey? When after spending three months sharing with them, serving them, eating with them, listening to them, did you believe that they don't say no to you now? You, you, you didn't ask them to be a Christian or they Muslim or Jehovah's Witnesses. You just asked them where they are on their spiritual journey. And then it begins to tell you how to share your faith with them. Don't close the deal yet. Mm-hmm. Let them talk about the journey. And the latter part of this state is this. This is what you do. Tell them about your love of God. Tell them that you thank God for blessing them to be in your life. Because they've been, they've been journeying with you, right? Then tell them testimony. Three ways. Somebody say three ways. Three ways. Tell them about your life before Christ. Mm. Oh, and listen. Be all that, be real. Yeah. Some of y'all, yeah. some of y'all yeah. jacked up. Yeah. Some of y'all open and close the club. Tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all get yeah. some stuff. Amen. This is being taped. Leave me alone. Yeah. That you will not tell the mama or your dad or your pastor. Yeah. So if your life before Christ becomes an easy thing yeah. to do. Because people love real people. Yeah. That's right. Tell them how you are. You struggle with alcohol, drugs, or sexuality. Tell them, because you don't have no idea that that's in their head. They say, wow, you went through that too? Yeah. Wow, I guess I can really talk to you, because most Christians won't go there. Yes. Yes. Life, what? Before what? Christ. Christ. Now, you got to know the next, the next part of the story. What is what? It says, tell them about your life of how you became a Christian. Mm-hmm. You didn't know your story. When you became a fully devoted follower of Christ, when you became committed, what was that date? 
What was that experience? What happened? Who helped you? How did you get stronger? Tell them that. Rehearse that. The third one is what? Tell them about your life since you become a Christian. The good, the bad, the challenges, the blessings, and the abuse. Yes. It is, it, you pass some roses, but you pass some thorns too. Yes. You pass some sleep and nights, you pass some mountains, yes. you pass some mountains to climb. Yes. You've got to tell people how you, even as a Christian, just because I'm a Christian, don't think I don't struggle with sin. Right. I don't get to that time. I'm still sick, so I'm cussing. I'm oh, sorry, profanity for those who are really proper in words. <laughs> Tell people that you have been through something and you still not live through it. Yes. People need to see and hear and experience real Christians in this real world trying to serve a real God. Amen. Amen. Let me close. And in Matthew 4, 19 20, and he said, Follow me. I'm a Christian man. Immediately they left it to the next and follow Jesus. Be imitators of Christ. And that he is the but be follows me in this eye of Christ. Ask them to follow you as you follow Christ. Then what do you do? Look at part D. I'm open to you. After they say that, listen, I'm open to hear about this Christ. You tell them in part D. I'm open to helping you experience the same love and passion that I have for Christ. If you're willing to take this journey, journey with me. Will you read the prayer with me? Read the prayer with me, please. Let's read. God made me as your children. Learn to share our faith in you through the truth of us. With those who are the people of Christ, of those who are the of Christ, may your church become so contagious that people would want to try to follow the fellowship. May you are a great worship. Amen. Q and A. What's what's one the one to take away you got from this lesson? Any one takeaways? What what rest of it? You have to be authentic. Yes. Next one. Walk around the room quickly. Open ended questions. Open ended, open 12 questions. My brother, what was going on? Uh, the unchurched part was the relationship. Yes. Not, don't don't tell us to make fun of say you're unchurched. That's what you want. Okay. Instead of keep talking. Listen, instead of keep on talking. Go ahead, Pete. I like to give a prayer. You're just going there on a mission from God. That's it. My sensations. Patience. Shout out to everybody that took something good. I love the unchurch. Unchurch? Yeah. My good friend? It's a process. It's a process. My sister? Uh, that Jesus told a story when he asked questions. Yes! Uh, my good sister? Stay on John. Stay on John. What was it? What was it? What So, like, Jesus did. Serve like Jesus. My good friend. Nice hat. Unchurch. 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 Do you know anything come out good from the folks? What one, one, one nice. thing? Bless. Chris, any thoughts back from here? You're enthusiastic. My enthusiasm. <laughs> On that note, let's go. Father in heaven, thank you, God. We have two more sessions um, in April and May about evangelism. The next one, missional ministry. How to do it with life, work, and play. That's next month. May you just keep moving us, God. Yes, to become doers of your word and not just your tone. May our faith become contagious. That people want more of us and we will tell them more about Jesus. Yeah, As we leave this room, don't be depressed. Lead us to meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Help us become relational. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.